Before the review, quick updates, you'll notice it's been a while since I uploaded a big analysis. Reason for that being, my main video editing computer uh, did that. Luckily, I backed up my files and I'm working on a replacement, so stuff is coming. Anyways, today I wanted to talk about this movie that dropped on Netflix, The Mitchells vs. The Machines. The film's written and directed by Michael Rianda and Jeff Rowe, both of whom were major players on the show Gravity Falls. Rianda was creative director on season one, Rowe was a writer on season two. Add on Phil Lord and Christopher Miller as producers, and I didn't really see any kind of situation where this would be a bad movie. So I watched it and, uh, yeah, it's turned out to be one of the best family movies I've seen in recent years. Right off the bat, the animation has a great style to it. And I don't just mean with the character and background models either. The way it's lit and colored stands out to me the most. And I really appreciate the way they developed and used new technology and techniques here. I've always had the minority opinion that 3D computer animation had the potential to match traditional hand-drawn animation in its expressiveness. And this is the second time in three years that Sony Pictures Animation has vindicated me on that stance. Layer onto that the little accents that pop up here and there and you get a movie that just bursts with energy. That energy really helps to move the comedy along as well, because this movie has some hilarious moments in it. The written jokes are clever, the visual humor is snappy, the giant destroyer of worlds Furby is... Uh, glorious. Now my only critique of the entire film is that at a few instances the jokes land at a spot where it does briefly halt the movie's pacing. But 99% of the time, they land and flow just fine, so it's a small issue. Also, I have to give this movie props for incorporating meme culture in a way that didn't make me want to shrivel up and die. It's not used in a ham-fisted way to appeal to Gen Z. It actually understands the kind of absurd non-sequitur logic behind it, as well as doubling as a divide between the main character Katie and her father. And speaking of, I really enjoyed these characters. The protagonist is Katie Mitchell, a teenage girl who's just been accepted into art school. She gets along well with her brother and her mom, but her relationship with her father is strained to say the least. So she's looking forward to getting the chance to move out and start her own life. The deuteragonist is her father, Rick. He's a man desperate to try to reconnect with his daughter, and he realizes that this is his last chance to mend their relationship. This is a fantastic setup for drama. As the movie unfolds, it takes the story along a natural progression, and at times when I feared it'd take a cliched route out, the film avoided it. Add into this Katie's brother Aaron, who's trying to help his sister work through this process, and her mother Linda, trying to help her husband, you get this great family dynamic that keeps the story moving along, hitting the right dramatic and comedic beats at just the right times. This movie made me cry over a little wooden moose. Trust me, you'll understand when you see it. Because yes, you should see it. And all of this ties into a second theme about technology, which I really appreciated was a more complex than a simple put the phone down and connect to people moral. This movie is about how technology can bring people together and express themselves in ways that might be easier for others to understand. It's a refreshing and genuine message that ties the whole movie up really well. Really, it's kind of miraculous that the Mitchells vs. the Machines pulled off all of this. It's just endlessly likable, and it cements Sony Pictures Animation as a resurgent power among major animation studios. If you have Netflix, I recommend giving it a watch no matter your age, because this is a family road trip you don't want to miss.